Good morning, everyone. Um, so in today's video, we are going to view here the exercise 513. This is for chapter five, homework two, which I forgot to put here. All right. And so basically in this exercise, what we have to do is we have to find out the missing information and how to calculate these to fill in the blanks so that we can receive our mark for this exercise. So what I've done here is I've basically copied this from Wiley Plus, which you can verify afterwards. Uh, simply, I have pasted in Excel to, to, help, to help me with this. Um, I have placed um, the part A here, and this is to find out the net purchases. So in our first little box here, I have put out the formula and the formula, simple formula is basically taking the amount of purchases and you subtract the purchases returns and allowance to give you what your net purchases are, which is this number here, right? So we take this number and we subtract this number to get this number, which is right here. Um, so that would be our answer, which I have placed over here. Okay. Um, in regards to the next one, we have to find out what the cost of goods purchased are. So down here, I have placed there our formula and this is taking our net purchases and we add the amount we add the amount of freight in okay and that will end up giving us our cost of good purchases so now since we figured out what our net purchases are with the formula above below we have placed an Um, we have here, we have placed the cost of good purchased. So there we have our answer um, by taking the previous one we figured out and adding it to the one that is already in the question to give us our B. And our final one for company B is the cost of goods sold. So um, this is over here, this one here. So we take our goods, our cost of goods available for sale and we subtract our ending inventory, which gives our total cost of goods sold. So here we have uh, cost of goods for sale minus our inventory, which gives us our cost of goods sold. Okay. Um, so basically that is our for question B. Or for company B, now we're going to go into company M to figure out the same thing. So. This time we have to find out what our purchase returns and allowance are. So this time we have to switch around the formula. It's kind of like basic algebra on each side of the equation. Um, A plus B plus C is equal to C type thing. And you just switch them around to find each missing piece when you have two or more. So in this case, <coughs> we have our purchases, right, which we know is 1,102. And we have our net purchases, which is 1,061. In order to find that, we basically take this and we subtract that, which will give us what our purchase returns and allowance are, which is 41. Now, to simply verify this, you know, we do the reverse and we take purchase and returns allowances that we have for an answer. We add it to our net, to our net purchases, and that will give us what our total purchases are. Um, we can also do this exact same formula just to make sure. So we can take our purchases, right, the 1,102, and we can subtract by our purchase return and allowance, which should give us our net purchases, which is 1,061. So in our next 
question that they ask us is the freight in. We have to find out what the freight in is. Now, we know from previous that the freight in is, we take our net purchases plus the freight in equals the cost of good purchases. Now to flip that around, what we would do is we would take, we would take the cost of good purchases and then we would subtract our net purchases and that would equal our freight in. And we can do that by, verify that by adding these two and that will give our total amount, right? Which is over here, net purchases plus the freight in is equal to our cost of good purchases. So we take our net purchases plus this will end up equaling that. So that question works out perfectly. Um, for ending inventory, we have to do the following, which is this one here. So what we need to do is we have to take our costs of goods available for sale, and we have to minus or subtract the cost of goods sold, and that will give us our ending inventory. Now, so basically, um, to verify that, we would we could take our cost of goods available for sale, and we would subtract that by our inventory, just like over here, which will end up giving us our cost of goods sold, which is this. So that works out perfectly. Um, and then we do the exact same thing for O. Um, so O, this time we have to find out, we have to find out uh, what G is, which is purchases. Now, we know what our purchase allowance is, and we know what our net purchases are. And so that's how we have to find out what are actually uh, purchases are. In order to do that, we would take our net purchases and we would add our purchase allowances, uh, purchase returns and allowances, and that would end up equaling what our purchases are. Uh, now, I do believe that is... Um, over here. This is another one. So it is right here. And this would be our, and so we take our net purchases, we add our purchase returns and loans, which equals our total purchases. Um, all right, and then we can go to H, which is our freight in, which we know. In order to get our freight in, we take our goods of, cost of good purchase, less our net purchases will equal our freight in, which we've already done previously in the E, so H, we get this answer by taking those. Um, for I, which is a new one for us, which is the cost of good available for sale. So in order to find this one out, we simply take our beginning inventory and we add our cost of good purchased and by combining those, we get our cost of good available for, for sale. So in this case here, um, in I, we take our beginning inventory and we add that to our cost of good purchases, which will end up giving our answer over here, which is 8,925. Okay, so in company S, this time they're asking us for our beginning inventory. Now this is a new one for us. So what we got to do here is a little bit different. We take our, um, oh, right, I didn't, I haven't done this one yet. The reason I hadn't done this one yet was because we need to find out what our cost of good purchased is. Uh, our cost, sorry, our cost of good for sale is, because I believe that, oh, we do have that cost for good purchases, which we didn't have. So 
first you got to find out the cost of good purchases. Now, to find out our cost of good purchase, we had to take our net purchases and we had to add that to our freight in purchases. And that would give us our cost of good purchases, which was 45,421. So once we have that answer, um, then we can figure out our next one, which was, um, which is our beginning inventory, which we take 45,421. I'm sorry, just give me a second here. 4,421. And then we we take our cost, our cost of good available for sale, and we subtract our cost of good purchased, which would give us our beginning inventory of 5,100. And that there is our answer for J, 100. Okay. And for K, which is our purchase returns and allowance, we take our purchases and we subtract it by our net purchases. And that will give us our cost. So, um, which works out to being 1,326, which we take this, subtract this, and we get this. And that is basically how we would resolve our chapter five homework two, which didn't seem to stay there. Um, in, in a nutshell. I hope that was helpful. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, you can leave me a, a comment um, inside the discussion board. Thanks so much for your time. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.